Hi there. I didn't see you. Welcome. We're about to start a makeup on Mark here, our model, for Ramphis, who's a character from Aida. So I'm uh, just cleaning his skin off to start this makeup with a little bit of witch hazel. We're going to be putting a bald cap on him, which I know sounds strange. But the fact that the design calls for a bald head and he has just enough that it would read, uh, and just to demonstrate the application of a bald cap, we're going to go ahead and do that too. The bald cap that we're using today is actually a vinyl cap as opposed to latex, uh, so it can be glued down with uh, medical adhesive or a prosthetic adhesive, a white emulsion glue, such as Prosade or Ben Nye's prosthetic adhesive will work for it too. And then the edges can be melted off with a bit of uh, what we call edger, which is actually acetone. So if you just put a finger up there. Don't be afraid to ask your model for a little help when you need it. And you can let go, sir. So this is a nice snug fit, which is important with the bald cap so that you don't get a lot of wrinkles. And when applying a bald cap, there's a blending edge. The back of the cap is much thicker to provide a, a bit of uh, more stability in it so that it <clears throat> won't have as many lumps and bumps if you're going over someone with longer hair that has to be prepped under it. And then the edge has been uh, bled off onto a thinner membrane that can be melted off more easily. So you kind of check to see where those thicker areas are and then you try to line up that transition between the thinner front and the heavier back so that you can make sure that you're blending off the edge that's thinner and not a thick edge, which would be harder to hide. So I poured out a little bit of prosthetic adhesive into a cup, which is what I'm going to choose to use for it. Like I said, this is a, um, a water-based white emulsion glue, uh, acrylic-based. Um, I'm going to apply it with a Q-tip. Wouldn't use a brush because it tends to gum up brushes, although you can clean it out with a little bit of alcohol or sometimes acetone. And usually with bald cap applications, we start at the front. So I'm going to peel up this and paint a little bit of the prosthetic adhesive on his forehead right there. And this is kind of an anchor point. If you're going to have a sweaty performer, you might also paint the cap especially on the nape of the neck. Uh, you kind of need to wait for it to dry a bit and become clear, and then you can pull your cap down and you can stick it in place. And since this is a vinyl cap, I'm pretty sure the camera's picking that up. I can see where the glue is placed, so I'll be able to then blend it off. I know where I need to drop the edger to, um, to take the band off and get a nice blend into the head. And I'm just going to go from temple to temple to get the top of the bald cap down first. And if you don't let the glue dry, um, sometimes you'll end up with white pockets underneath. But if you're gluing down other prosthetics, uh, just be wary that it's not going to show through, especially silicone prosthetics. So I'm moving on to the back. That's the next thing to get tension, and then we'll go over and pull this down and then we'll get a nice smooth bald head. So I'm going to actually have the artist tilt his head back because that's going to put extra tension. So if he is on stage making that type of movement, you won't get a lot of wrinkling. If he's forward and he goes back, you'll get a bunch of buckling that won't look very realistic. Like I said, this is the area you might do a coat on the cap and on the skin. So with his head tilted back, I'm going to pull down and stretch forward. Notice that it's flared out. And then I'm immediately going to place my hand on his neck and smooth that into place. Then I'm going to have him put his head back in a normal position and just make sure that it isn't too much. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to continue gluing the back of the nape down to the side. Often, if we know we have an artist that sweats a lot, some people will take a little straw and powder it, and they'll put it up the back when they're gluing down the cap 
or something else that they can remove later that leaves a little channel. Um, because when you're on stage and you're sweating and it's all under here, it, if there's somewhere for the sweat to run away from the face and uh, not collect under it, the cap will stay better glued down because otherwise it just runs all to the glue and eventually it can start uh, ungluing the glue and releasing the cap. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the ears. With the ears, I like to use safety scissors, so the, the nose scissors, sometimes you can get them curved just because of where you're working around. You can kind of see the shape of the ear. A lot of uh, makeup artists will mark it. I'm just going to cut up. So I'm cutting up right from the earlobe on a diagonal, right up to the center of the curve of the ear. And I'm going to stop just shy, probably right in where the, uh, the ear starts to curve out and curls over because I'll need that little lip to glue behind the ear because I'll pop the ear out after it's been cut. And you do kind of have to be a little careful with these caps. They can rip very easily. And I also have my finger under the cap against his ear, protecting it as I cut the cap so that I'm not near his ear, but I'm cutting against my finger. So a bit of artist safety. And I cut in a circular thing so that I could then do that. Now that's really good in the back, actually. Um, I've left a little bit much material up here, so I'm gonna need to trim out for the front of the ear because if I pull this down, he'll end up looking like um, dopey from, uh, you know, <laughs> which isn't necessarily a good thing. And it's always better to cut small quantities because you can cut more, but it's hard to put it back. So the, I'm going to start here and glue the back down first. There's a lot of excess here that I'm not going to need, so I just want to kind of come from the back of the ear and I'm going to remove a lot of that. You want to leave a little because you need to have a handle to, to pull the cap to really get it to snug down to the neck. And I'm going to start up behind the ear and I'm gonna pull the whole thing forward when I do this so that I make sure that I've got really good tension on the cap. So then we'll melt off all this flapping stuff because we don't need it. I should also mention that this glue, um, a thinner layer is better than too much. You put a lot on, it, it doesn't make it any more sticky. It's a uh, considered a dry contact adhesive. So as I had mentioned on the nape, which I actually did, uh, painting both sides and letting them dry is, it provides its optimal performance. So, and then the next step in this would then to be to do the sides. I'm gonna start over here, and we've again got a bunch of excess that we really don't need. I only want to glue to just under a sideburn. So we're just going to cut that off. Again, leaving a little bit extra because I need something to melt off later. And we're already stuck all the way up to here in front of his temple. So all we need to do at this point is this portion. You can see I'm going right up to my previous glue line just in front of his hairline. Thin application of the glue. All the way around. And then in one fell swoop. I will pull this down and stick. The one thing that you may want to be conscious of though is that you don't pull it down so tight that you end up giving the person a facelift because it will cause some unnatural wrinkling which you don't necessarily want. See I didn't let the glue, little accident, let the glue dry enough and there's a little white under there. Uh, it probably won't ever dry that spot, not a big deal. Um, because we're gonna be covering it with a lot of makeup, but uh, you really do wanna let the glue dry. This cap also has some wrinkles in it, um, and that's from packaging. It's been left in a bag. Uh, it's sold in a bag. A lot of people will take them out and they'll take a hair dryer and just heat the inside of it, and that helps to remove those wrinkles, and then they'll drape it over something like a block, wig block. I'm going to hand the artist, just because I'm working with this uh, edger, a Kleenex in case anything comes anywhere near uh, his eye. 
But I'm finding my glue line and I've taken some of this edger and I'm looking to lift and dissolve and I'm pushing away from the bald cap onto the little flanged area, little flap I left right at the glue line because that's going to help the bald cap blend into the skin. And it takes a little bit of product But if you've done it right, you should get a really beautiful blend. And it really doesn't matter where you start. Some people start on the forehead. I just like to start on an ear. But you can see how nice these vinyl claps uh, blended to the skin. There's virtually no edge. But I'm gonna start at the other ear and meld back up this way. A lot of people will then go and seal this. Um, with a little bit of uh, prosade stippled over top of it, sometimes a little brush of final seal. Uh, those are options. For a stage, we don't often do that. Uh, it's only going to be worn for a couple of hours if you're doing film and you really needed to get a transition. Sometimes these caps don't have a lot of texture to them. So uh, some people also use a little duo and it just adds a transition of texture from the skin onto the cap. Then I'm going to just take the back edge and around the ear and just do a little dissolve so that we don't see the edge anymore. And be careful there because you can end up putting a little hole in the cap if you do too much because it's all dissolvable with the acetone. So the cap is much thicker in the back here. I know you can't see it, but it's uh, requiring more of the edger to really remove it. And almost done, I'm just finishing up the blend right around the ear here. This design is very um, exposed, so he just has a hair piece that goes down the center. And for the sake of close-up examination, we'll just finish it off more film-like. So although the cap isn't custom for him, it's a pretty good fit. It got a, a couple of pole lines, depending, which sometimes they'll, they'll do. It's hard to do a bald cap in the back. I'm Dana Nye, president of Ben Nye Makeup and we're at the United Makeup Artists Expo in London. Darren Jinx has just finished applying a bald cap. This is a vinyl cap. Our model is Mark Lewitt, and our character is Ramphus. I'd like to invite you to watch the Ben Nye YouTube channel. We have numerous tutorials, information about our product, even how we make makeup in Los Angeles. It's a pleasure to be with you today, and we look forward to seeing you again.